Well, good morning, everybody. How you doing? This is Jeremiah, and we are doing another webinar on websites. You know the uh, the genesis of of this idea for a webinar. It was mildly humorous, but you know it was uh, as we were just brainstorming and and uh, the, along the brainstorm was you know what are some things that are not directly related to our software, you know what other things can can we provide technical expertise and things like that, and and someone kind of mentioned you know we're always researching these companies and some of them have the worst websites <laughs> or no website at all and 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 it just anyway it got a laugh um but you know what websites are important and as, I, as i've always said i mean i've had everyone from a, a towing company to uh, you know a realtor office to you know across the board you know asking you know what sort of website should i get do i need a website and the short answer is they help prevent stupid questions i think that's one of the best ways to look at it is is if people call you and ask you stupid questions you gotta think to yourself maybe i need a website and i'll answer those questions on the website but we're going to get into way more than that we're going to get into how powerful they can be for showing off who you are and what you do um at the top of your screen there is a little uh, view options and you can exit the full screen mode. I like doing that if I need to get to something on my screen. And also please make note of where the Q and A box is. That stands for questions and answers. You can type in anything there and we'll get it answered and, and uh, route it over to Forrest to uh, show off some things and all that. So, you know, anything we're going too fast or too technical or not technical enough, those are all great questions. Go ahead and type those in. I think I have burned enough time here. I'm gonna go ahead and get this passed on over to Forrest. All right, thanks, Jer. Um, and thanks everybody for showing up. Uh, like Jer said, let me know if I'm talking too fast. I feel like I've had too much coffee today, so I'm going to try and, and speak in a slow voice. Um, but uh, yeah, we're here to talk about websites primarily targeted for, say, like Jair said, some of our clients who might not have a website or might have an old website. Um, obviously, some of our small business clients uh, in particular, as we have some... Uh, some of our clients that have spectacular websites, some of our international corporations that use our software. But, you know, we, we cater to everybody. Um, and who, who am I? This is me. I am the webmaster here, and I also do a fair amount of tech support still. You may have talked to me back in the day on the telephone when there were not as many tech support people here. Um, but hopefully, uh, I can provide some expertise as far as a website. So this is a quick overview of what we'll cover today. Um, what makes a good website? What are some of the benchmarks and signature characteristics of a good website? Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about logos, branding, uh, high quality images, um, Squarespace, WordPress, uh, and the other types of platforms out there that you may come across in your research when you're trying to figure out how to navigate the murky world of websites. Um, uh, for this webinar, I've settled on Squarespace, and I'll show you why in a moment. Um, and fresh content, quality photos. And I will, at the end, briefly go over a couple of promotional techniques that you can use to get your website out there. Um, this webinar is gonna have a tremendous amount of resources and links. So I will make sure that all of those are online when we post the recording of this webinar. There's gonna be a, a ton of information uh, for further research. So this will probably be online by the end of today at the very latest on Monday. So jumping right in, what does make a good website? Uh, there's a couple of key characteristics that you'll find in good quality websites. Uh, quality content, content is still king. We're talking about 
well written text um, and high quality images uh, professional looking design high quality images right down here um, high resolution images a lot of people have high resolution monitors now and so you can tell a website that was made five years ago by the pixelated images that show up on your high resolution monitor that's also something to be aware of but something that I've put in bold is obvious navigation for easy to find information uh, with clear calls to action. You know, when, when you're looking around and you're looking online for a service, if you're doing some research and you stumble on someone's website and you have a hard time figuring out what you're supposed to click on, that is a big red flag that that's a bad website design. Um, mobile optimized this is 2018 and uh, that's extremely important uh, search engine friendly that's also extremely important but a lot of those bullet points are handled by Squarespace and WordPress templates uh, they're already built to be mobile optimized search engine friendly they look professional so fortunately uh, a lot of these things you don't have to worry about as much. Um, just as a quick example, I've got a couple of, it's like I was talking about maybe bad websites. Here is an example of maybe a confusing website where it looks like it's old and you just don't know where to click. There's just so much going on. There's no clear navigation. And of course, if you click on something, it's a broken link. You know, here, this is an odd one. This is actually the author of The Hunger Games. So she's a prominent author. And this is her personal website. It's just kind of dated and confusing and really old looking. So, you know. The, it, the, it runs the gamut out there on the, on the internet. You can find everything. Um, so it's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit crazy out there. People you wouldn't expect to have a bad website do. Um, oops, I got a little lost there. So for instance, um, oh, you know what? Let's look at an example of a great website. This uh, company is one of our clients. And this website looks really slick. EDSA, obviously, they're a huge company. Um, they've got this wonderful drone footage happening as an underlay under their main page when you land here. And when you scroll down, it's got really clear navigation. You know exactly what you're in for. Uh, really beautiful photography. With, uh, it's visually appealing. It's really clear as far as what you're looking at. And uh, everything kind of makes sense. There's some featured works down here. So that, that's an example of a fantastic site, in my opinion. Um, uh, moving on, logos and branding. Now, I know that that's not directly related to website design. However, I do feel that it is important. Uh, you know, along with some of the outdated and old websites that we see out there, we see some outdated and old logos. And when you're trying to put your website together from scratch, these are really important things to consider. A really clean professional logo, a consistent color scheme, some font consistency, and some high quality images. Uh, that will really make or break the visual aesthetic of a website. Um, and there, I have a bunch of links here that I will go into in a moment for how to achieve uh, some of these things without having to spend a tremendous amount of time and money. So just a quick little example of some bad logos that you might find out there. Um, you know, there's that ubiquitous papyrus font that you see everywhere that everybody seems to just continue to use. Um, some of them look maybe hand drawn. 
or they just look busy and cluttered, you know. And obviously, I put this one in here, London 2012 Olympics, because that's a really, really major international big event, and you'd think they'd have a nicer logo. But in design circles, that one's kind of legendary for being a world-class, busy, bad logo. So, you know, it, 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 again, it runs the gamut. You can find major players out there with bad logos. Um, here I've put together a quick list of uh, some good logos. This is a little smattering here of some of our clients, some iconic logos, and some random logos that I found around on the internet. A lot of these principles of good design is clean, it's iconic, it's simple, and often they're representative of what it is that they're offering. I also put our logo right here. Big shout out to Paul here in the office who designed our logo. It's, it's I feel like it, it checks a lot of those boxes. Um, there's some good client logos on here. Um, EDSA, Stantec. There is some iconic logos, the Nike swoosh, the Apple Beats. And then here's some random inter logos I found online. This one, you can see this guy, his silhouette and his golf club just kind of make the shape of a Spartan head. So that one's also a really famous one in design circles for being a great logo. And, you know, the reason I'm bringing up a lot of this stuff is just because all of these things help when you're putting together your website. Because if you're using some colors in your logo, you're going to continue to use those colors in your website design. So a little bit more about fonts and colors. As a general rule of thumb, when it comes to fonts, you're going to want to use between one and three fonts in your designs and in your website layouts. And you'll also want to use a consistent color palette. Uh, you know, select a primary color and use an online color palette generator to create a palette that works with your logo. Um, one, to th one to three fonts, that's kind of a general rule of thumb. Uh, most sites or designs average two fonts. If you come across a site that has six to eight different fonts, it's just it's just over the top. You don't want it. Nobody wants to look at it. It's hard to read. So we're trying to make the information accessible and presentable to the user um, who's trying to figure out what's going on on your website. So I've taken a lot of these uh, rules of thumb, these fonts, the color palettes, and the logo concepts, and I generated this fictional landscape architecture company that we'll use in this webinar to create a website for. So I made this little logo and I used uh, my two fonts that I've decided that I'm going to use. Why did you make the logo a frowny face? <laughs> Is he frowning? Do you see it frowning, Jer? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Keep going. <laughs> it, is, it is awesome. Well, I guess I'm going to have to revamp it and make it smiling later. I'll do an edit and post it in the uh, recorded version. Um, and so I took that green and I popped it into one of these online color palette generators. And it gave me this little palette of colors. And so we'll take all this information and, uh, oh, and we will also take some of our clients' amazing photos. And I'll use these as examples when we put together the web, the example website. But take note of these, just a couple of quick shots of what our clients submit for our annual photo contest. And you could just like see the caliber of these photos. They're amazing. These are all from our clients and they're all just nice high-end photography. And I will go into a little bit more resources about photos in a little bit. Um, so when you're 
researching on putting together a website, there's a couple of contenders that always come to the top. Squarespace, uh, WordPress, there's a couple of other ones out there, Joomla, etc. But these are the two that are the most uh, consumer friendly so that you don't have to be a programmer to use either of these. So WordPress is one of them that's everywhere. It's by the latest estimates, it's running 12% of all websites online, which is a huge percentage. Uh, and it's relatively easy to use. It's not overly complicated. It's extremely flexible because there's a ton of plugins and options available. It can be a little tricky. Um, there are updates and sometimes server maintenance depending on what host you go with. Um, and as far as a user interface, it can be a little bit confusing. Um, it's, it's about $25 a month. That's their entry level package, which includes your domain name. So that's kind of a ballpark figure financially of what you're in for versus Squarespace, which is extremely easy to use. Like, I can't stress that enough compared to WordPress. It's night and day. They have great support, great documentation, hassle-free, and it's about the same price, $30 a month is their entry-level package, which also includes your domain name. So for this webinar, uh, we're going to go with Squarespace. I, I really do feel like it's better suited for the target audience of this webinar, your, your small business landscape architecture company. Maybe you have one to three land effects licenses, something like that, so, and you need to get something together. I think Squarespace is going to be better suited for your needs. So if we were to jump into this, uh, Squarespace, I figure maybe we should just dive right in. So when you get here, it's really easy to log in and create a trial account, um, three clicks and you're in their system. So I already have logged in and right up here, just click create a site and you'll be presented with a plethora of just gorgeous looking templates. They all look very modern, very professional, very clean. I mean, it's almost like you don't have to do too much, but pop in your photos, right? So uh, let's just stick with this one. I like this one. This is a good one to start with. So once you decide which template you wanna use, they just make it so easy for you. You're like, oh, okay, I'm here. All right, my fictional company. Now, hopefully what this is showing you is that it's not, uh, it's not gonna be that difficult to do this on your own. You know, you can take some of the tips here and you can uh, create your own website without having to get stressed about it or having to hire a designer. You could, you could do a lot of this stuff yourself. So now first thing you notice when you get here, you've got just kind of your standard templates. So let's think about, let's think about our um, organization here. Let's, let's think about our pages, our page structure. You know, standard website's gonna have a home page, you can have an about page, a contact page, maybe a news or a blog, um, some testimonials, projects, or a gallery page to showcase your work, you know? So I think that's the first thing you should consider when you're structuring your website is to think about your structure, think about what pages you're gonna have and move forward from there. I'm gonna start with that list that we just saw. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up right here and get this looking really simple. I'm just gonna simplify it. Homepage, about page. Um, let's make this 
click the little gear icon and change this into maybe a contact page. I think this would be a, a great place for you to start is to start with your structure, start with your navigation, and then work from there. If we're looking at my list here, we've got uh, home, about, contact, news. Uh, let's add um, let's add that projects page. Here we go. And you can see again how easy it is to make everything happen in Squarespace. Just boom, projects. Right? Save. Um, once you get your structure dialed in, then uh, then you can move on to working on some of your aesthetics. Um, here's a couple of quick things you can do. We can go up here. Let's add, let's add that logo. I have that logo that I made. Let's go ahead and add that in here. Do, do, do. And then, all right, save. And there it is, right? A couple of quick things you can do. Um, aesthetically, you can add some of your project photos here. Now, hopefully this is kind of giving you an idea of how easy it is to get, make all these things happen. Um, if we go back here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move past this and talk about customizations. So I just showed you a real quick overview of how easy it is to create all the different pages on Squarespace. But what you're gonna really need to do is customize these templates. Those templates look gorgeous, but if you don't customize them to make them a little bit unique, then you're still not gonna stand out. I did a quick search for landscape architects in the San Luis Obispo County area. And within the first two or three pages of my Google search, I found two different landscape architecture companies that were using the same Squarespace theme. And I saw that and I thought, well, I'm gonna to have to make sure that I add a customizations slide to this presentation so that you don't get stuck in that same trap. So going back to the previous points that we touched on with fonts and colors, uh, you can do a couple of quick customizations to this template to make yourself stand out from the crowd. Now, you're going to find that information on this really nice little sidebar that they have. Design, and here is where you can find your style editor. So this is going to be great. This is going to be really easy to change some of these colors and these styles so it doesn't look just like an out-of-the-box Squarespace template. For instance, you can change these colors. Now, I'm going to go back to my... Um, my color scheme over here so I can find my color palette. And my, I'm gonna use my, my green instead of the template green. So that is this color, right? So there's just a quick step. I'm also going to change that to square. So now it's just, just that simple little fix, that green matches the green in the logo, and it keeps it from looking like an out of the box Squarespace template. So that's huge. Um, you, you can go through and do all those settings uh, to all of the other colors, uh, fonts. Let's get in here to those fonts too. So you can quickly go in here. So, oh, look, there's a search box. Main content. Here's your fonts. That's a good one. Uh, that one matches with my theme. That one matches with my theme. Here we go. This one we're going to change to my font that I've already chosen. All right. 
And let's make sure what this one is. Yep, I'm gonna have to change that one as well. So again, just a couple of small fixes, quick selections, and you can make your site a little bit more customized. Um, now I've already built this whole site up using um, some content. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the final version of it. Um, Jer, is there any questions? There is. Um, someone um, just kind of missed how you, how you brought your color palette in from your little custom color palette. Oh, right. Um, my color palette I used, obviously I'm on a Mac, so I have this guy. Uh, this is my cheat. I use this daily. I can hover over a color and see what it is and press Command Shift C and then I have it on my clipboard for pasting. Now that's just my cheat because to be completely honest, I forgot to write down the hex values for these colors on this slide. So if I had the little hex values from my color palette, I could just copy and paste them right in. Um, now I generated that color palette from one of these resources I have up here. Then there's a couple of these online where you can pick your primary color for uh, your logo and you can just paste it in. Oops, that's no longer it. And then click generate and it'll, it'll take your primary color and it'll create a color scheme around that. And you can just click generate a couple times until you find one that you like. And that is exactly how I got to this color palette. I took this green in the, in the logo, I popped it in the generator and it generated those colors. And I thought, well, we'll just use those. That looks great. So sorry if I went a little fast there, but there's a lot you can do with the colors and those links I will have online when we post the recording. And what was that little color picker tool again? That's really neat. The, the little, that Mac program. Yeah. Digital color meter. And that is built into the Mac operating system. So that's pretty, that's like a, a design essential tool. <laughs> that, totally. Yeah. So, um, so let's say I went in and I built, this is, this is kind of my finished product and I can go through and show the different sections. Now, if you see what's going on in the background of this homepage, I took a, uh, an, I guess, open source uh, drone footage from a public, publicly licensed, free to use uh, website where you can find video. And I thought, well, you know, some of those sites that we really like right now are showing a lot of these drone footage underlays right when you land on the main page. And it looks so sharp. I thought this one would apply to our clients because it kind of shows maybe a little bit of landscaping and something that would really appeal to a visitor that lands on your website. Um, the drone footage is really hot right now. The, the, other, the other site that I pulled up earlier, whoops, edsa.com is not their website. That's funny. Um, they're kind of doing the same thing. There's, there's some great drone footage underlays under their logo and the text right when you land on their page and it just looks gorgeous. It's really appealing. And it's, it's really inviting. Instantly, as a visitor to this website, I'm intrigued. I'm like, ooh, this looks nice. What's going on here? So using that concept, I popped in this drone footage underlay. And I thought, well, you know, maybe our clients could uh, win a drone in our photo contest this year. Well, that might be something uh, to consider. And I'll, I'll pull that up in a little bit to to talk a little bit more about that. So there's, a, there's, there's something really appealing here. There's uh, my branding color. This matches my logo. There's some really, really clear navigation. What are you looking for? What do you need? Everything's there. And if you scroll down, for this site, I've used 
photos from all of our clients as an example of what to expect, what you, what you really want to achieve on your site, these gorgeous looking images. This one's from uh, Red Eisen. They're our land FX client in Costa Rica and they just do beautiful work in a tropical environment. This one's from EDSA, it was a website we were just looking at. They use land effects in Dubai to create um, spectacular landscapes. And you can see the caliber of these photos that, you know, and you'd be surprised because you'd think, okay, they hired a professional photographer in Dubai, sure. But I know that this company, they take their own photos. If I click more projects, I would go to another page that I've set up. Uh, and again, just to reiterate, over here you can see my structure. I've set up that home about projects, testimonials, and contact. Just wanted to be sure that that was there. Um, I've set up another photo underlay under here. And then as a visitor, I'm looking at these beautiful images and I'm thinking, okay, if say Landscape Fantastic was the company that did all of these, as a visitor, I'd think, well, okay, I'm definitely gonna hire them. Um, this is a great one, by the way. This is Cadence. Uh, they're in Florida. They've been a Land Effects client since 2015. And this, whoops, this is actually a 3D rendering. And it's so photorealistic. They've used the Land Effects SketchUp plugin to place some plants and do some SketchUp work. And then they use a, a high quality uh, third party SketchUp rendering platform. I believe it was, uh, I don't remember which one they used exactly, but it's just kind of amazing what you can do now. Um, Falling Waters, they've been a client since 2008. And uh, I believe they take most of their own photos as well. Uh, just wonderful stuff. Uh, let's see, some of the other pages that I have set up. A typical about page. This is actually us at lunch on a Friday. Um, here's a bio. Here's a really clear call to action at the end of the page. I think that's often underlooked uh, when you land on a page like this if you're putting something together for your site. If you have something nice, Maybe it shows some photos of your employees or photos of you, a little bit of a bio, and then a really clear call to action at the bottom as like, okay, well, what are you gonna do now? Now that you are here, now that you have read this, what's the next thing you want the user to do? And in this case, it's hire us. So you click that and it goes to the contact form that I have set up where they would fill it out and send you an email or call you um, or email you. So there's a couple of general concepts here at play. Uh, the clear calls to action at the end of the page. Um, here's a testimonials section that I put together. This is another Red Eisen photo from Costa Rica. They do great work. Um, now these are actually all land effects testimonials. Oh yeah, I put that down here. And now keep in mind that I, I put this page together using Squarespace uh, in less than a day. So I also I have access to all these tremendous resources, our client photography. Um, also I, I am a designer too, so I do have access to those kind of resources, but hopefully this conveys how easy it is for you to do it yourself. Um, and I'm just using those fonts that I've already set up that work with my logo. And so everything's consistent, everything's clean, and it's all looking good across the board. So that is my Squarespace site. We had a couple uh, questions on that, if you could bounce over. Um, uh, very related is um, a couple people wanted to know uh, where you, um, well actually, where you got the drone video um, footage and if you um, also had a resource for royalty free landscape photos. But relatedly, um, just kind of repeating how you uh, pulled that 
video into the to your um, Squarespace page and you know, how, how you bring in those photos and videos. Yes, yes, we can go over that real quick. There are several royalty free uh, photo resources and video resources out there. Uh, this is one of the big ones. And this is actually where I found the um, uh, drone footage. I don't see it here, but I know that this company also does video. I guess we'll go like this. Here we go, video.pexels.com, free stock videos. Now this is all royalty free. And so you can do drone and then there's all these quick drone footage that people have uploaded and have set as accessible and allowed people. There's the one that I used right there. So I, I thought that would be really representative of something that would be good for this industry maybe some drone footage of a plan that you did recently. Now I know that not everybody has a drone. Um, that, and, and there's ways around that we're going to get into in a moment. But if we go into this edit, okay, let's go ahead and here we go, page, banner. And this is Squarespace uh, being awesome and easy to use. If I wanted to put an image, or if I wanted to put a video underlay. Uh, we've, we've put this drone footage on Vimeo so that I can provide a YouTube or Vimeo URL. And then the, I did a, added a filter. It's all right here. It's all really easy to use. And you can just adjust it. And I thought it might be nice to have this kind of low brightness filter underlay under the text so that you st your eyes would catch the motion and see what's happening, but it wouldn't be so distracting to take away from the text on the page. And that's just built in to Squarespace. And it's a, again, how easy it is to do that. When you're in editing mode on Squarespace and you hover over, whoops, if you hover over things, you'll get these little edit buttons. And so if I hover over this page, I click edit and now I'm in an editing mode for this page where I can change the text, image, edit, and we can just click edit. You can have filters for your images. You can change your image. You can add a new one. You can uh, pop in one of these. And I'm just gonna drag one from my computer right into there. And it automatically processes it, resizes it, and does everything you need. It's actually quite astounding at how easy it is to use <laughs> as a as a guy who's been making websites for what fifteen plus years. I'm like, oh, so uh, I'm going to be out of a job in twenty years, fifteen years, ten years, maybe, <laughs> with the proliferation of uh, places like Squarespace. <laughs> I have to work for them. <laughs> I know, right? Um, you know, we have another couple questions. If this isn't holding you back too much, um, both related on on uh, basically like kind of hosting and domain name. So uh, I'm taking it with so Squarespace is is taking care of the hosting as well. Um, yes. And I imagine when you set it up, they say, "Do you already have your domain name?" And they'll go ahead and help you through the transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, is that all correct? Or anything to add on that process? That is correct. Um, when you, if you logged into Squarespace to start a new account and you don't have a domain name, they will register your domain name and host your website. They will do all of it. If you already have a domain name that you've registered for your company, they will help you walk you through the process of setting it up so that it points to your new website. Uh, it's extremely streamlined and it's a lot easier to use than say GoDaddy or any of those um, kind of platforms out there that you may have used to register your domain. So that, that'll make it extremely easy. Yeah. Gotcha. And so if you did register your own domain, that's what would appear at the top, right? Instead of squarespace.com when you're going to the website. Yeah, it, correct. Mm -hmm. When you're on the, um, that entry level package, uh, y your, your website, URL will show in the URL bar and um, it won't have any branding on it. 
So it, no, from a casual visitor, they won't be able to tell that it's a, a Squarespace site. All the branding will be gone. So, well, very cool. So let's see here. Um, fresh content is really key with your websites. And this is where I, I want to dig into a little bit more about f uh, photos. High quality professional photos, they really do make a huge difference. And a lot of our clients, I'd say maybe a mix of probably half and half, maybe a little bit more like 60-40, where 60% 60 or more of our clients are taking their own photos now versus maybe 40-ish percent who are hiring professional photographers. Um, but we do have some resources for you. We have a couple of webinars that we've done. This is one we just did recently that uh, Paul did. Uh, and it's, it's going to give you the entire run through of how to use your camera, how to go for the great angles, how to look for the right uh, compositions. And this is just part one of this two part series that Paul's doing. But we also have a webinar from last year that was done by a professional photographer who does a lot of work with landscape architects. So uh, I can't stress this enough that the, the photos make a huge difference. And we're trying to help you work on your photo taking skills so that you could enter our photo contest. Uh, this is coming right up, right around the corner. And this is going to be amazing because we were just talking about drones. And guess what? The first prize in our photo contest is a drone. So this is a win-win scenario for everybody. Go watch our video or watch our photo webinars, learn to take some great shots, submit the shots, and win yourself a drone so that then you can have that great drone footage on your website. It's it's an absolute win-win. Second place is a really nice camera, this Nikon D7500 uh, with all of the accoutrements. Third place is a really, really nice iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil. So just wanted to give another plug out there for uh, the photo contest. And, and we're looking for all different types of photos too. If you're just an irrigation designer, submit some irrigation photos. Last year, we did not get very many irrigation photos at all. So if you're an irrigation designer out there, please submit your photos. Your chances of winning are significantly higher if no one is, else is submitting photos in that category. So there's a little secret, secret tip for you. Uh, details, aerial shots. Uh, we also love all of the wonderful 3D renderings that our clients send us. Night shots. We also didn't get a lot of night shots last year. So that is uh, another one to think about. If we're not going to get many night shots, if you do submit yours, you have a higher chance of winning in that category. Um, and it, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, so we will be promoting that pretty heavily uh, next month. So you will definitely hear about it from us. It won't go under the radar, I guarantee you. But we, like I said, we have all these great resources and uh, it's, I just can't stress it enough that makes or breaks uh, a landscape architect website. Uh, another thing that we've talked about a lot here is uh, regularly updated content. And don't let your site get stale. You know, if you have new clients, or if you have new jobs that have just been completed, uh, make sure and take the time to update your website on a regular basis. And, you know, I would recommend maybe making a monthly calendar entry that pops up on your calendar and just says, hey, update your website, or maybe target a specific section. Because the last thing you want is someone to visit your website a year ago and then come back a year later and everything is exactly the same and they're going to think well this doesn't look like a very active company so that's a little bit of a tricky situation there you just got to make sure and keep 
updated on a regular basis, maybe a blog or a news section, but uh, you know, don't, don't let it get old. If you go to somebody's news section on their website and the most recent post is two years ago, it, it's not going to look good. It's, it's going to be a bad scene. So um, I was going to move on to another section about promotions. But uh, let me just stop and ask Jer how everything's going over there. Going great. Go right ahead. Um, one thing that can be a little bit much and overwhelming is the world of SEO and website promotions. Uh, fortunately, like I said, Squarespace does a lot of that heavy lifting for you. You've got, it's doing all the metadata, it's optimizing your HTML, it's mobile optimized. And so you don't have to worry about a lot of those things. And that's just fantastic. You're, you're a business owner. You don't have time to worry about all of this, like technical details. So, you know, if you use the Squarespace, they've got you covered. Uh, one thing that I would highly recommend is some reciprocal linking. See if any of your clients or any of your large clients will link to your website in return for you showcasing the work that you've done for them on your website. Uh, that is one of the main factors that is still uh, highly regarded in the world of SEO as being something that search engines will see and that they will give you bonus points. They'll say, oh, okay, there's links going to this website. So this website must be important. So if somebody's searching landscape architecture in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and they see this one particular website has more incoming links to it, than another website, then they will give some weight, more weight to that website in the search results. Now, obviously, there are a ton of other factors involved, but that is a big one. I, if you focus on that, I think you'll see some results and it'll be a good thing. There's other tools you can use. There's a, a Google search console where you can sign up and register your, your sites and you can see all the things, you can peek behind the curtain and look at all the things that are going on as well as uh, Google Analytics. Um, social media, make sure all of your social media accounts link to your website. Now, I know some of these might seem like a no brainer, but it's just, it's funny how sometimes the little things get missed. Just go to all of your company's social media pages and look at them and make sure that they're all specifically linking to your website. And that will also help. Um, Google Local Business has a really, really great uh, little section set up where you can register your business online and they'll give you a, a really nice little profile that'll show up in your search results. So that's something you should be, that should be on your radar. And another little no-brainer at the end, just make sure you put your URL on all of your promotional materials, your business cards and your print ads and the like, you know, just all of that kind of stuff. Um, there was a lot of information in this webinar and I kind of went through it a little bit quickly, but it will be recorded and it will be posted online and all of those links that I presented and even some of them that I didn't open, I will include all of those links on the recorded webinar page on landeffects.com slash webinars. So uh, there's going to be a, a wealth of information to go through. And, you know, we're here too. If you have some questions, uh, let me know. We're, we're always here for you. As you know, as a land effects client, you know, our, our serve support is great. Um, Jer, um, no talent questions other, but I came up with one when you were showing the, you know, the reminders on your social media and all of that. Um, and also just, you know, keeping a, a, a website, um, fresh with recent photos and all that. Are, are you aware of, of any, um, services that, that help with that? I, I, I know there's a while ago, someone approached us wanting to run all of our social, social media accounts for some ungodly like three thousand dollars a month or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was like um no <laughs> but, um are, are, are you aware of uh, kind of any turnkey services that do help with uh managing all, all the sort of stuff 
Yeah, there are a couple of them out there that are priced for a small business. Uh, the majority of them are set up uh, for larger companies and are like the ones that approached us extremely expensive. Um, you, but you know what? I haven't, I haven't looked it up recently off the top of my head. I can't remember the name, but you know what? I will include it, uh, some links to those in uh, the recording when I post it. I'll make sure that I put those links up. Well, great. And um, well, I think that pretty much wraps it up then. So i um, wishing everyone a great weekend and uh, looking forward to seeing some really fresh new websites out there. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good weekend.